All right, I'm doing something a little different here tonight. Um, no shop, no Clayton's house. Uh, just going to do some screen recording on the computer here and go over some airbag information. Um, anybody who follows the channel or came across our videos, I did a rebuild on a 2017 Infiniti QX60 last year and uh, ran into a small snafu. I didn't catch a hard code in the SRS module, so I decided to try to figure out how to clear it on my own without having to send it off somewhere. Realized it was very difficult at that time to find any information on what software people were using, what equipment it took, and how it was done. Um, so I figured I'd address that now. Um, if you're just looking for that information without any backstory or any understanding of how the airbag system works, I'll have uh, chapters in the description so you can just skip ahead to it. Um, otherwise, kind of here's, here's how we got where we're at. So I uh, had the Infinity. Missed a hard code, replaced roof row airbags, driver seat airbag, impact sensor, all that stuff. Realized it was hard coded, I need to get it done ASAP. Um, at first, I couldn't find anybody to do it. Luckily, I found SRS Solutions in Dallas. Super awesome people, very reasonably priced. I'll put their contact information in the description. Um, if you are local to this area and you need somebody to do it quickly, he did it that day. Johnny on the spot, I drove over there, handed it to him, didn't hide anything, didn't pretend like it was a big ordeal, just reset it and handed it back. Exchanged money, awesome. Also, there are multiple SRS modules that can be pushed over OBD2 for a clear. That Infinity is one of them. They use an Infi Inferion chip or Infineon chip, I can't remember what they call it, but Ford uses it, Nissan Infinity uses it, and I believe a few other manufacturers may use it now. Um, I couldn't find it immediately, like I said, so I had already pulled the module, so he just did it on the bench, but uh, you can push it over OBD2 on certain things. So, let's get into this. Um, this is my first time ever doing this, so I don't, if this screen capture doesn't look good, I'm sorry. But, um, yeah, essentially, you know, in order to even start on airbags, you kinda gotta understand the airbag system. So if you look here, we got uh, a diagram of like a basic system here. So there's, there's basically four main components. You have your airbags, obviously, your seat belts and retractors. You have your impact sensors, and then you have the module itself, which I don't know where they put it in this thing. That's the indicator, sending unit right here. So they're going at the sending unit. Um, so first things first, if you're gonna work on an airbag system and you're new to this and you're looking for general information, always have your battery unplugged or unhooked. So you always unhook the battery, you give it time to discharge any capacitors in the system. You do not want these things getting some sort of weird voltage while you're working on them and blowing. Um, so once that's out of the way, you start with the airbags. They're super easy. You don't need a scanner. Obviously they exploded. Um, I stay away from the dash airbags like these ones here because they typically tear the dash, but uh, you can replace them and try and either replace the dash or try and patch it, but I've never seen any good work there. Uh, typically you want something has airbag or knee bags deployed, uh, those are very easy to swap. Curtain airbags are very doable, but they are a little more involved. Seat airbags, I would call the most difficult, um, but also doable, especially if you can just find a matching seat that's in good condition, you can just swap the entire seat. Uh, secondly, you have your seat belts. You need to see which seat belts are deployed. Um, for seat belts and impact sensors and hard codes, you need to have a scanner. So you cannot do an airbag system without a scanner. Um, at least reliably, you could probably just throw stuff at it, but if you want to know exactly, you need that scanner. So the seat belts have two pieces, they have the retractor and then they have uh, pretensioners. So the way seat belt works is uh, it has, the retractor side of it has a bunch of ball bearings that sit in a tube that has like a piece of foil essentially, just like a small in holder and a charge behind it. That charge is a thermal incident, creates an explosion, shoots those ball bearings through that holder into the actual retractor part of it, which is what ratchets and it, boom, sticks into the teeth and prevents it from moving. So that's how it gets locked out. Um, the other side of it's the pretensioner, which is like a, uh, it's like a metal cable with a charge on it that hooks to the part the seatbelt clips into. So that piece, whenever it deploys, pulls that cable, which yanks down on your lap belt and cinches it down tight on you. Um, so in order to repair those, you need to send them off to a professional or swap them with ones that aren't deployed yet. Um, you gotta be careful if you ever see an airbag light on in like a rebuild vehicle. Uh, a lot of times I've heard of people just opening the seat belts and taking those ball bearings out so the ratchets work again, but they're still deployed and they won't deploy again. So that's a big no, 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 no. 
So if you see an airbag light on, you're looking at a rebuild vehicle, make sure you scan that and see what codes it's throwing. Um, I wouldn't buy it anyway, because that's a major safety issue. Um, some vehicles disable the entire airbag system with that lights on, so you really need to make sure that's taken care of. But moving forward, <coughs> the third part is the impact sensor. So you can see one's diagrammed here for the front and one's diagrammed here for the side. Most vehicles have multiple in the front, multiple in the rear, and multiple down the side. Um, they basically just are there to de determine the collision, essentially. You can detect if they're hit physically or if there's just a high G-force reading, um, and then they relay um, almost instantaneously, I think it's like 20 to 50 milliseconds, uh, the SRS unit gets the information and sends it out to the bags, like it's super fast. So anytime there's a collision, you need to figure out which sensor set it off, and those 95% of the time need to be replaced. Um, sometimes if it's just a G-force reading, they can be cleared, but it's good, good practice to scan them, check them, and replace them. Um, and then that finally leads us to why most people are here, and that is the SRS module itself. So the SRS module, um, has a lot of capabilities. It's basically the ECM for the airbag system. Um, it can, it will deploy the bags. It gets all the data from the impact sensors. It can lock the seatbelts out. It does all of that good stuff. But it also does something else that is lesser known, I would say. And that is, it is the black box. So if you've ever heard stories of the black box where people are in some form of litigation or something and they get information such as speed during the collision um i don't know they have all kinds of things odometer reading basically any information the ecu has at that time right gets flash stored on the srs module now that's why most srs modules are in the center of the vehicle underneath the center console or something um so you see this one in this diagram it made it look like it's kind of forward forward facing but typically they're more back here in the center so that way if your car gets all folded up they can't get touched they're hard to get to so you can't mess with them other people can't really mess with them unless they really try. Um, so they just kind of keep them secure. But uh, they also have a G for uh, whatever measures G forces. So that way, if you have a hard G force, but you don't make contact with any of these impact sensors, or they miss it, they can still deploy bags. Um, it has uh, some sort of sensor that can determine whether or not it's flipped over. So if you ever remove one, you got to make dang sure the battery is disconnected and you make sure you unplug it before you ever flip it over or we'll deploy all of the airbags thinking the car just rolled over. There's a lot to it. Um, they also monitor the speed of the vehicle, so that way if you're going super slow and you hit something, even if you hit it directly on the impact sensor, but you're doing five miles an hour, it won't deploy airbags. So they're very, very, very fancy. But the way they stored that crash data, right, which is all of your speed and odometer readings and probably temperature, like anything the ECM has on it at the time, it flash stores it. That is called an EE prom chip, right, which we'll jump over here and we'll see what that looks like. That stands for electronically erasable programmable read-only memory, all right? It's basically a flash drive. That's important because that chip can store information and it doesn't need power to keep it. So even if your battery is severed or exploded or whatever happens, you lose power for a long time, that information is there until you erase it. That is why a lot of deal, like most dealerships and a lot of body shops will tell you if the module has a hard code, it needs to be replaced, which is very expensive. That's just a cash grab from the manufacturer. They say that in the guides, but that's just because they want you to pay it out a couple thousand dollars for an SRS module. The reality is, is it's one chip on the circuit board of that computer. It's called an EEPROM, right? That's holding the data. They're re they're rewritable over and over and over again. They use them in all kinds of other fields. So all you gotta do is be able to communicate to that chip and erase it and put back what was on there originally. That leads me to why we're doing this video. So you can pay companies like Safety Restore or My Airbag, and they'll uh, they can reset these. It's like. 50 to 75 bucks. That's who I normally use. Now I'll be using SRS solutions in Dallas because they're local and I'd like to support local business. Plus their prices were fantastic. I can't remember what he charged me, but it wasn't very much, like 50 bucks or something. Um, a super nice guy. So I highly recommend them if you're local in DFW area. But if you want to go down and get the, if you do enough of these that you want to have your own setup, here's what I found, right? So once you realize you're just talking to an EEPROM chip, you just need basically a stored copy of a clean SRS module, right? And it turns out there's multiple companies that offer this. So over, over here on this OBD365 uh, forum, I found uh, this write-up and uh, it's showing three different things that you can use to reset SRS modules, Diatronic, NT630, and CarProg. So we're gonna talk about CarProg last because that seems to be by far the most popular. 
Um, Diatronic is the basically the name brand, name brand expensive version, right? If you do a whole bunch of these and you're familiar with how these kinds of systems work and you can solder and unsolder and do all these things, this is probably the route if you're gonna do a whole bunch, right? So this is a Diatronic reset tool they're showing here. You can read this article, I'll put a link in the description, but needless to say, uh, this is like 1500 bucks for this setup. Um, it can push the chips over OBD2, which is great. This other one, which is the NT630, is a Foxwell scanner. I actually had one of these at one point. Um, I had terrible luck with it, but that doesn't mean it doesn't work. That The one I had did not work very well though. So the final one is called CarProg. So these are like considered cheap China clones. I don't know where to buy these to be honest. So I found a few different places like Amazon sells this giant kit here with like the V10, but I think this is like knockoffs. So like here's one at the OBD website, more clones, it's like 80 bucks. So they have their own website, but they don't sell any equipment. So all they have here is they have the clean data. So that's what you're gonna use to upload um, once you wipe it. But if you're wondering why there's so many different attachments, this all goes back to that EE prom chip, right? So the way you read and write to that thing, if it's not one of the Infineon chips, is that you have to pull apart the module case, find the chip on the board, which is very identifiable, and solder to it, and then use your laptop or whatever equipment you're using to push the new data or the, the old data slash reset it, right? Um, as cars get newer, they will all be connected on CAN bus, almost guaranteed, hopefully inter ethernet at some point in time. I've had that talk with my buddy a lot. Uh, Tesla, I think, is actually doing that, which is incredible, but that's a different day. Um, needless to say, if you don't have the new one and it's not a super modern car, you have to solder to the board. So you gotta be comfortable soldering and desoldering. As long as you can do that, it seems pretty straightforward and easy. And the name of the company that you, or the name of the product you're looking for is CarProg if you're trying to start cheap and just get into it cheaply. If you're comfortable soldering, desoldering, you're familiar with EE problems, you want to do, be able to do a whole bunch of cars, I would look into Diatronics. Um, you could also use the Foxwell scanner. Give that a go. I mean, if anybody has any sort of positive things to say about that, throw them in the comments, man. Or if y'all have any other information, throw it in the comments, because this is as far as I got. Um, I now have someone local who could do it. But when I was looking into this that night, trying to figure out how to do it on the fly, uh, there was a couple of YouTube videos of guys pushing it through OBD, but they would never admit to what software they were using or what setup they had for whatever reason, they were keeping, keeping it super tight lipped. It was really hard to find this information even though it seems really available and easy. Um, and maybe it was just me being dumb, but that that's that, and that's how you get it done. You can reset any SRS module at, with CarProg or Diatronic from my understanding. The NT630 can do uh, possibly, I guess the OBDs, maybe I just didn't have any Infineon chips at the time whenever I was trying it, so that makes sense. Um, it was gifted to me from a friend of ours and then somehow we lost it. So that's that. <laughs> well, you know, it happens, but if, if, you know, in short, um, yeah, if you want to get into resetting airbag modules, this is a good place to start and get some information. Um, or if you're trying to tackle an airbag deployment repair for the first time, it's a really nice overview, I think. Um, simple explanation of how the system works. It's obviously a lot more complicated than that, but that's a decent understanding of what you're doing. Um, but yeah, man, so, uh, anybody comes across this video, if y'all want to see some more, some more stuff, stick around. You're more than welcome to, if there's some comments down in the comments, um, I got a Mustang Coyote swap that'll be debuting pretty soon that we're about to finish. That's never been on my YouTube channel. We got lots more house remodeling at my buddy's place that you can see on the channel. And I always have rebuilds and custom builds going. So feel free to subscribe, like, comment do whatever but uh hopefully y'all learn something and if you have any questions just ask and i'll try and answer them thanks